four, three, two, one. All right. It is, of course, uh, the hell is it? Tuesday night. <laughs> Forgive my busted ass glasses. These things are just reading glasses. They're like um, three for 12 bucks. And, you know, I beat the hell out of them. I drop them, they fall out of my pocket. I walk on them. Who fucking knows? I just want to throw this out there real quick. This is something a little unlike what I usually do because I actually have some study stuff to back this up. It's something that I do, but I decided that today I had some time on my hands, which is kind of rare during the day. And so I um, got on the almighty internet and uh, just researched a little bit just to happen to see. I just wonder if there's any kind of science to back up some of the things that I do. You know, and I'm not going to stay on there all day, but um, lo and behold, there was plenty. So it's just coincidental. I don't really need science to verify it, but just to satisfy guys that, you know, like to read the studies for themselves and draw their own conclusions. I, uh, and it, let me, let me just be honest with you. Let me be real here. It was really tedious and boring. So I don't suspect that I'm going to do that a great deal. But at the same time, it was very interesting and kind of like stroke of my own ego a little bit, which I don't really need to do. And, you know, but it, uh, you know, like, uh, wow, the stuff that I do actually has science behind it. You know, <laughs> like I really need that. But, you know, the old school way is if it worked, you keep it and leave it in. And if it didn't work, you throw it the hell out. Right. So that's pretty much it. The shit that I keep in and I do is just shit that works. And that's what I try to tell you guys about or the things that I found that works for me and they'll probably work for you, you know, and it may not work for everybody because we're all a little different. But today we're talking about pumps, pump, the pump and staying as full as possible. So how are you going to stay full? Okay. A huge portion of it is going to be genetic, right? The genetic factor, you know, have nice full muscle bellies and so forth. So on insertions. Okay. But beyond that, anybody can just um, train their muscles to hold more glycogen. This is what I believe. And um, now I don't have science to back that up, but it, it just makes sense to me. As you stretch the fascia, you're going to be able to hold more anything, right? You stretch the fascia. The, the number one, and this is pretty much agreed on. This isn't really me just throwing conjecture out there. Basically, the largest factor limiting how quick you can grow. There's, there's numerous factors now, but one of the largest factors limiting how quickly you can attain new muscle growth is, uh, or what we consider new muscle growth, is um, the ability of the fascia to expand and accommodate that new growth, right? Because the fascia is stronger than corded steel, so they claim. And if it's really, really tight and restrictive, come, you know, it doesn't take a, a scientist to understand that it's going to be hard to get new muscle in there when you can't expand, you can't grow, and there's no fucking room for it. Um, so most everything that I do as far as the stuff that I do to, to chase a pump or to enhance the pump is mainly to stretch that fascia. And it kind of goes along with the rolfing and manipulation to stretch the fascia and, and break up the scar tissue and all that shit. Because you want to accommodate more muscle, more room for more muscle growth. And the more you can do that over a period of time, the bigger the muscle can get. That's what I believe. And the more easily you can get there. So works for me. It's always worked for me. And it should work for anybody, regardless of the shape of your fucking muscle. Um, so you want to try and hold as much glycogen in the muscle as possible. If you can hold more glycogen in the muscle, if you can get more blood into the muscle, um, you're going to get, you know, the bigger pump you can get, you're going to stretch the fascia more and more. And the more you can do this. Now, what if you could stay full, fuller 24 seven? What if you could hold more glycogen 24 seven? Okay, then you would have more glycogen on hand for the next workout. So you're going to get crazy pumps. The more glycogen you can put in the muscle, the bigger the pump. It's as simple as that. The bigger the pump, the harder the muscle can work because the glycogen is the number one fuel for that muscle for that kind of workout. Uh, so there's all kinds of benefits, of course. Uh, but just visually, a nice full muscle is a nice full round muscle. And it's why we drink. It's part of why we need all the water etc etc it's why it's one of the one of the reasons why that i consume the carbohydrates around the workout that i do i don't like the uh caffeine pre-workout for a number of reasons but there's probably some benefit to it so if you need that 
rush from the caffeine or that focus or concentration or whatever drive, then that's on you. If you decide that uh, it's a fair trade-off, you're willing to accept the vatio constrictive part that the caffeine may play, all right, which is at odds where you're, we're trying to do everything that's uh, vatio dilating to get more blood in there, then you know that's for you to decide. It's your body, it's your muscle, it's your game. You know, do you basically you find out what works for you and, and what works best for you. Once you arrive at that conclusion, that's what you do. You know, everything else is just a bunch of ideas and stuff that works for somebody else that you can try and you can try and, and, and then sort through it all and keep what works best for you. That's what it's all about. Uh, because we're all different to a degree. So I found this study and um, I like the caffeine post-workout. I like it post-workout and I like it throughout the day just to, um, you know, for the fat burning fucking factor involved, the thermogenic factor to it. Uh, and it makes a good diuretic. But um, I found this here study that talks about caffeine aiding in carbohydrate uptake. So it kind of explains or legitimizes my use of the caffeine post-workout. Okay, now in this study, what they did was they took a bunch of athletes and they made sure they were completely wrung out with glycogen. You can read the study if you want the details. I don't want to take my word for it. Um, they made sure that they got all the muscle glycogen you know, out of them. They burned it all out. And then the day after that, when they should have been running dry on glycogen, basically, they had them ingest post-workout. They put them through a workout, and they had them ingest. So if they had any little glycogen left over, it was gone then. After the workout, post-workout, they had them ingest a drink with carbohydrate and caffeine, half of them. The other half ingested just a drink with carbohydrate and placebo. Now, here's what happened. All of the ones that ingested any drink, everybody in the study, in an hour's time, all had experienced pretty much um, the same amount of glycogen uptake. They had all restored the same amount of glycogen into the muscle. Now, four hours later when they looked, the group that had taken in the caffeine and carbohydrate had 66% more glycogen packed into that muscle than the group that only took in the carbohydrate without the caffeine. Now that is uh that is huge that's huge 66 percent greater okay that means that if that happened to you today that means tomorrow night you're gonna fucking have that much more glycogen for a pump and it means that if you have 66 percent more glycogen in that muscle you're gonna see that shit you're gonna see 66 percent you're gonna be fuller you're gonna wake up you're gonna be walking around just fuller rounder muscles you know, et cetera, et cetera, because that's what glycogen does. And you're full. That's what it's from. So that is, that's, that's, um, that's a big, big boost there, 66% greater increase. That's a lot. It's not a little. It's nothing to sneeze at. It's not small potatoes. So you're talking about a, a greater pump, you know, the next workout from that. Uh, and then you also, it's, it's fuel, so you're going to be able to work harder. You're going to be able to work longer. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Not that all that necessarily, you don't necessarily want to work longer. Working harder is fine. And the pump, we want that because you're going to have, you know, you're going to stretch it faster even further. Now, to make sure that they could reproduce this and it wasn't a fluke, they came back 10 days later. They did the same thing all over again, but this time they switched it around. This time, the other half of the group, the ones that got the carbs and um, caffeine post-workout the first go-round, this time all they got was the carbs. Then the other half, the guys that had had just the carbs last time, this time they get the carbs and the uh, caffeine. And guess what? Same thing happened. An hour later, everybody had experienced the same amount of glycogen reloading. Uh, four hours later, the guys that got the caffeine with the carbohydrate had 66% more on average glycogen crammed into that muscle than the guys that only had the carbohydrate you know, and placebo. So... That's pretty solid shit right there. So there you go. That's uh, caffeine aids and carbohydrate uptake. Post-exercise caffeine helps muscles refuel. And do you have a quote here? I just want to. This is from uh, Dr. John Hawley. Uh, he was senior author of this study. 
He's from RMIT University, which is Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology. And he says, quote, if you have 66% more fuel for the next day's training or competition, there is absolutely no question you will go farther or faster, end quote. So there you go. Caffeine post-workout, yes. Now me, of course, still caffeine pre-workout, no. Not for me. Because everything for me is about stretching that fascia so that I can walk around nice and full all the time. Nice and big and full. I don't, wanna, I don't want to uh, lose the opportunity to stretch that fascia. So that's it. And next time we're going to go into the gym... And, you know, one of the most common things people notice when they actually meet me and get to work out with me is they want to know, how in the hell do you get such a pump? Because if you think you've seen big pumps before, I get inches. So what we're going to do, we just measured my arms uh, a couple weeks ago. Brandy, as Jason's girl, measured them in the gym just on a fluke, just because some guys there happen to have one of these tape measuring devices made for your arms or whatever that... The, uh, the, the, the device that holds the tape that it recoils into is kind of has a concave element to it so that it actually kind of fits, it's contoured to kind of fit your arm. And um, they were just curious. So I said, oh, yeah, I don't care. You can measure my arm. What the hell? I don't care. So my arm was cold, but I flexed and they measured. And she was off a little bit on the side. Well, not really on the peak, but I'm not being picky. But um, it still measured 21 and a quarter. So that was cold. Now, I don't know if it's, we're going to measure cold again when we go into the gym and we'll see what we got on video. Then we're going to measure it afterwards, doing all the things that I do, you know, with the carbohydrates and the carbolin and arginine and all that bullshit. And we're going to measure it afterwards to, so you can see how much of a pump I actually gained. And I'll bet you it's over 22 inches. Bet you it is. So the whole point of that is just, I'm telling you guys, Chase that fascia stretch. Stretch that fascia. Anything that you can do to stretch that fascia and enhance that pump, that's going to make you bigger in the long run. That's the way to go. That's the fastest way. I, that's just, it is what it is. People that want to say bullshit, they haven't tried it. They haven't done it. Let me see what they're, what they're carrying around. You know, show me the guns or the quads or the back or what. You know, let's see what you got. All right, so... You guys, try it yourselves and let me know. That's what matters. Doesn't matter what's on a paper. Doesn't matter how many studies or what studies or who says what or who discovered what. Right? It only matters if it works or it doesn't work. So we'll be back again. That's it for tonight. I just wanted to try and throw that down here real quick and uh, see what you guys think of it. Take care. Have an awesome evening.